These nuts are about chromosomes, meiosis, and karyotypes. So a chromosome, remember, is made of DNA and proteins, and it carries genetic information found in the nucleus, and when the cell's not dividing, we call it chromatin. And just before the cells divide, as we know, in, in prophase, it becomes the rod-shaped chromosomes. So that's, we need to talk about what, what in, is involved in the chromosomes. It, they look sort of like this. Okay, this is a, a, a scanning electron micrograph of chromosomes. <clears throat> you see this one is composed of two sister chromatids uh, joined together with the centromere here. And it's just all the DNA that's just coiled up very tightly. Chromosomes occur in pairs, okay, and they form what we call homologous pairs. Homo, homologous means that you have the same genes for the same traits in the same locations, okay. So here we have an allele, the form of a gene for, um, for a color, let's say, whatever this happens to be, um, in this, this uh, these two chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad, are homozygous for the dominant allele, whatever it is. This is another allele here for some recessive trait, and it's homologous or homozygous for the for the recessive trait. And then over here we have another allele that uh, that is um, dominant for one parent and recessive for the other. That's called called heterozygous. Now, what when we talk about multicellular organisms specifically, we talk about the fact that they, ha they are either diploid or haploid. We can describe their chromosome content by the number of sets of chromosomes they have. Diploid means that you've got two sets of chromosomes. You've got one um, copy of each chromosome from each parent. And the homologous pairs are present in the body cells. And this is the chromosome number. In humans, it's 46 total chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. There are cells that have only half the number of chromosomes. These are called haploid. And these are found in sex cells, like sperm cells and egg cells. The purpose of having haploid cells with half the chromosome number is that when the cell from the mother and the cell from the father combine to make the zygote that will grow into a new individual, the, um, the offspring will have the correct number of chromosomes. If you didn't cut the chromosome number in half, then the offspring would have twice the number of chromosomes as the parent. And since they wouldn't have the same number of chromosomes, they would not belong to the same species. Meiosis is the type of cell division that produces the haploid cells. Okay, uh, it, it involves the reduction of the diploid cells to haploid, and that's what produces the sex cells or gametes. Um, remember the homologous chromosomes, you've got one copy of each um, chromosome. There's a corresponding chromosome from, from the other parent that matches up with that one. Okay, and so we're going to separate the homologous chromosomes in the gametes. So the process of meiosis involves two divisions. They're called meiosis I and meiosis II. The stages or phases of meiosis are similar to and named the same as the stages of mitosis. But you have two divisions with only one replication. So in meiosis I, the homologous pairs of chromosomes are separated from each other, and you end up with two haploid cells. Each has the half the number of chromosomes, but the chromosomes are still doubled because the sister chromatids have not separated. In meiosis II, the chromatids are separated, and now you have four total haploid cells that are formed. So let's see what happens in the process. In meiosis I, you have a, a, a normally semi interphase. The cell undergoes DNA replication in the S phase, and everything is set up pretty much the same way as happened in mitosis. In prophase I, each chromosome pairs up with its homologous chromosome. This is called synapsis. And so you end up with something like this. You have four homologous chromatids or two homologous chromosomes. Remember, as long as they're attached at the centromere, there's still one chromosome. And they pair up together. They line up together in a, in a group of four chromatids called a tetrad. Four chromatids stuck together. In metaphase one, the, the tetrads line up in the center of the cell. They're attached to the spindle fibers that happens during prophases. They're getting lined up. <coughs> and so you have your homologous chrom chromosome pairs lined up in the center of the cell. In anaphase one, the, the homologous chromosomes separate, but the chromatids are still attached to the centromere. So at the end of at the end of um, telophase one, at the end of meiosis one, telophase one and cytokinesis, you have a nuclear membrane that forms and cells that separate into two haploid cells. But remember, each haploid cell, each haploid nucleus, ha is composed of chromosomes that are 
duplicated because the chromatids have not separated. In meiosis II, uh, you you'd immediately skip interphase and go straight to a prophase II and then to a metaphase II. Metaphase II, they're lined up in the middle of the cell. The, the spindle fibers are attached to the chromatids. And in anaphase II, this time the centromere split and the sister chromatids separate and move toward opposite ends of the cell. In telophase II, inside of kinesis, we end up with four haploid daughter cells, each with individual single chromatids that are now chromosomes. Now, one thing that happens during meiosis, especially in, in prophase one of meiosis, is something called crossing over. In crossing over, when the, when the um, homologous chromosomes are lined up in the tetrad, it's really easy for parts of the non-sister chromatids to cross over each other and exchange portions. This is really important in sexual reproduction because this ends up with different gene combinations that you would, than you would expect if the chromatids did not cross. And so here you have the tetrad with a pair of homologous chromosomes. Crossing over occurs, part of the blue one breaks off and attaches to the red and vice versa. And so you end up at the end of meiosis with four genetically different daughter cells rather than two identical ones like you have in mitosis. This is important again in sexual reproduction because it ends up with a lot of mixing of the of the genes of the of the gene combinations. Uh, here's another just another diagram that shows you the same kind of thing where you end up with the uh, different combinations in each of the, of the of the cells that result from meiosis. So in humans, remember we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. 22 pairs of those chromosomes are, are what we call somatic chromosomes. They're just the regular chromosomes that, that control everything else in the body. And the third and the 23rd pair are the sex chromosomes. In females, we have two X chromosomes, a true pair. And in males, we have an X and a Y. The Y chromosome is shorter and carries fewer genes than the X. Um, and those are the, the sex, like we said, the sex, the sex chromosomes. And there are certain genes that are located on one or the other of the chromosomes called sex-linked genes. And when we talk about genetics, we'll talk about both of those. Most of the sex-linked genes that we know about are on the X chromosome, and there are a few that are on the Y, but not very many that we, that we keep track of. This is, shows a picture of the homologous chromosomes of an individual. This is called a karyotype. And this shows the 23, 22 pairs of chromosomes plus the sex chromosomes. This particular individual is a female because there are two X chromosomes here. Uh, you can see that the chromosomes are the same length and they've got a similar pattern of banding that shows the locations of the different uh, groups of genes that are present on the chromosomes. Uh, sometimes there's an accident in meiosis, sometimes also in mitosis, but more often in meiosis, where a pair of homologous chromosomes or a pair of sister chromatids doesn't separate properly at anaphase. And when it happens in meiosis, then it can result in a gamete that has an extra or missing chromosomes. So here we have an example of non-disjunction in meiosis 1 showing that in this case this pair of homologous chromosomes did not separate and the second in the second meiotic division they separate this way and so you end up with some of the gametes that have extra chromosomes and some that have fewer chromosomes. All of these are abnormal gametes. Sometimes this results in not being able to form a zygote and other times it does work uh, but you end up with birth defects of one kind or another. Uh, if it happens in meiosis 2 then the pairs will separate uh, in meiosis 1, but in meiosis 2, then the sister chromatids don't separate, and you'll end up with, again, here you have two normal gametes, and then you have two abnormal gametes, one with extra chromosome and one that's missing a chromosome. And any of these conditions can result in various kinds of conditions that people can be born with. When you're born with three copies of a chromosome instead of two, this is called trisomy. Um, here's an example of trisomy. There are several different trisomies that do occur. Uh, this is called trisomy 1, which is caused as a Down syndrome. And notice here that if you line up the chromosomes in order from largest to smallest, that you end, and you end up with three copies of chromosome number 21. Trisomy 21 means you have three copies of that, and that's Down syndrome. This is a female with Down syndrome. Another condition that can occur with the sex chromosomes is that, that an individual may end up with uh, only one X chromosome. This it results in an individual called Turner syndrome. They have 45 chromosomes rather than 46 because that extra X chromosome or the Y chromosome is not present. 
And then another condition uh, that can occur is Klinefelter syndrome, where you have two X's and a Y. This is a male that has an extra X chromosome, and the, it, there are various kinds of um, symptoms that result from this. We'll do some activities with, with Klinefelter's, with um, karyotypes to talk about some of the conditions that can result. And this is the end of the notes on meiosis and karyotypes.